Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have a very special unboxing for you, something coming in from Urban EDC Supply. Today's unboxing is my Devo Knives Pony Stout. Great little budget knife at White Mountain Knives. An exclusive, might still be available, go check it out. All right, so let's dig into this. All right, so what do we have here? Let me just make sure it's not a receipt or anything like that. And there it is, so we'll put that off to the side. That goes over there. All right. So thanks for supporting Urban EDC. You can see there's the F5.5. That's a great knife, by the way, if you haven't checked that out. All right. Very cool. And nice little packaging here. Got a bunch of stuff. As you can see, it looks like it's a Devo Buzz, right? And Devo Knife Blackout. Okay, so it's a Devo Knives Buzz Blackout. So let's get into this. All right, got a nice coaster. I like that. I like coasters like that. Very cool. That's a nice little touch. And here's the box. Very cool box. It feels really packed in there. You see, it's kind of got some stuff in there. I wonder if there's extra goodies in there. So let's take a look. Oh, that is nice. That's kind of like a leatherette, kind of look nice. That's a pretty nifty little pouch. Wow. Okay, I'm impressed. I've, that's probably one of the nicest pouches I've ever opened. Oh, very cool. I like the little little patch here. That's nice. Patches, patches. I don't need any stinking patches, but I do need this one. And a nice, oh, a Devo Buzz. Another sticker for my wall of stickers. I'm going to put that up. And what a gigantic, nice cleaning cloth, microfiber cloth. That's great. I'm going to be using that one. No wonder why it was a little packed in there. It had some good stuff in there. I love the... I love the extra bling, the extra stuff in there, but let's get into the knife. This is what we're here for. Look at that really nice brass looking zipper. I mean, that's just a nice touch, right? All right, so what do we got? We got some more silicate gel. We got a whole bunch of hardware with some extra washers and everything and an extra clip. That's really cool. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, so I'm gonna put that over here, get that out of the way. All right, so this is the Devo I've got a little oil everywhere, which is fine. That's the Devo Buzz. All right, so let's take a look at that. Here's the Devo Buzz, Devo Knives. Um, you can see it's got a, a thumb hole or fuller hole, whatever you want to call it. It's got a front flipper, kind of a nice curve there. It's supposed to be really nice. Got a nice wire clip. It is left and right accessible. So right now it's, uh, yeah, it's right-handed uh, tip up. So you could easily switch it to left-handed tip up, which is really nice. Especially since Kevin over there, you know, at Lefty EDC, he's a lefty. So that is cool that they have that. Now, this is all blacked out. It's supposed to be black PVD or black stone washed on the blade. I like that. It's nice, nice, nice color. All the hardware is blacked out. And that's all T8s. And including the screw there, that's a T8. That's really nice. All right, so let's look at that. And we are dead nut centered, which is always great to see. All right, so we got a full back spacer. We've got the lanyard whatever you want to call it, loop little thing. You can still get one in there, but it's not prioritized. Definitely deep carry. You can see that's going to go all the way deep carry. All right, so let's take a look at this. Okay, let's give it a flick, okay? Oh, that's nice. So that's a beautiful hollow grind. I love that kind of a, what are we going to call this? Reverse Tonto slash Warncliffe, Sheep's Foot, modified, whatever you want to call it, right? I like it, though. I like it, and I like that hot, oh, Oh yeah, that's nice and nice and sharp, definitely, and really thin on that hologram. Can you see the hologram? Let's see if we can get that up there. Let's see if we can get that on focus. I want to get the camera to see it. Yeah, you can see that nice hologram. All right, so it's a liner lock, so let's look at that. Now, this is all blacked out, so it's a little harder to see, but it's fully engaged. I want to say about 40%, which is really nice. Got a nice little cutaway there. Let's see how easy it is to get to it. Oh, and the action, butter. Look at that, let's try it again. Reverse flick, really nice, butter. All right, so let's try this thing. It's supposed to be like you can grip it up on top. Oh, that is sweet, that is sweet. Let's choose, let me see if we can do the front. It's supposed to be able to get up here and just be able to do the front. Yes, sir, yes, sir, indeed, that's for sure. So you can see, like, here's the little Devo. You can see some of the similarities as far as that, um, I don't know what you want to call it, Warren Cliff. This was this is more like a Warncliffe sort of modified, right? And then this one here, both of these are hollow grind. I like that. 
definitely has a nice place for a choke up here. Okay, so let me put this out of the way, but you can see that we've got jimping and the jimping's up front. So when I choke up here like this, I've got some jimping I can really work that blade with, which is really, really nice, right? And uh, yeah. All right, so when I drop this blade, it look, see it catches on the finger choil right there, so I'm not gonna worry about a guillotine cutting my nail, getting into my, my finger and cutting me. So that is always a nice benefit for sure. I really like that. So you see that nice drop there? Really great action right out of the box. Typically I would put a skiff washers on here and I may do that in another video, but we'll see. I don't know if it needs it. Right now the action's kind of ridiculous, right? So let's do the lefty there. Really nice, and because it's liner lock, super easy to flick left-handed. Look at that, right hand flick as well. Really nice, and of course, if you had the little clip here, you could easily grab a hold of that, and then we could do that front flip, but I bet, let's see, yeah, super easy to flip over the top. I don't think I need to tune this one at all, honestly. Uh, yeah, let me see. You know, I'm gonna have to play with it a little bit. This doesn't feel really tight here. If you get, you've got really great access right in here, Really easy to drop, not not digging into my hand, uncomfortable at all. Because sometimes with a really strong detent, it's this part where you get into, it's hard. But see, look at that, he chamfered that right there with a nice axis right there and the chamfering. I mean, that's just a great touch. Look at that. Do you see that? I mean, it's a small thing and some, some people will maybe never notice it. But you, that is just really an ergonomic, comfortable fidget milestone right there as far as I'm concerned because I get in here yeah that's just ridiculously comfortable ridiculously comfortable I'm gonna do that again yeah look at that and it comes down here let's see yeah right there I don't know if you can see that comes right there on on the finger let's see if we can get it focused right there you see that yeah that's really cool I like that and we just kind of get comfortable with that. Yeah, this it's a different kind of flipper because normally you have like a little flipper, right? But this one, I can just do the whole thumb just right over. I like that. I can place my whole thumb right here and make it work. I don't have to find that one little itty bitty spot where you got to get just perfect to make it flip. Sometimes that's, that's, that's challenging, but not here, not this at all. Really smooth. Yeah, dead nut center really love that and i say dead nut center because i watch left edc quite a bit i enjoy him and he like he calls it dead nuts that's one of his little logos and so homage to left edc and devo knives those guys do a great job out there i love all the blacked out hardware that's really nice okay so now let's look at this so we got a little contour shape up here which is really nice this is this is contoured a uh, scale altogether. it is titanium so let's look at the inside what do we got all right so it's kind of hard to see, but this is, yeah, there's relief cut in this titanium scale here. And then look at the other side. So the liner here looks like, does it go all the way through? Yeah, I'm not sure if the liner goes all the way to the back. I can't quite see. You know, I'm going to have to get the flashlight. Let's take a look at that. All right. Okay, so there's a steel liner in there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can get that look. All right, so there's the steel liner. Can you see that? I want to make sure you guys can see that. So there's a steel liner in there. So steel liner, and it's got some weight relief cut out, which is nice. There's the steel. Well, I wonder, you know, hold on a second. So this is... Okay, wait a second. Yeah, okay, that's steel. Is this titanium? Okay, hold on a second. Oh, you got a steel insert. I bet this liner is titanium. This is a titanium liner. Oh, oh, what a nice touch. That's just like on F5.5. I mean, I was really blown away by that. See, look, I'm touching that right there. There's no attraction. But if I get up to that steel bar insert, it definitely pulls. You can feel it, the screws, probably titanium screws. But look, I'm touching this, this wire and it's not, is it attaching to the wire? No, it's not. But if you put it on the blade, obviously, it's going to attach. It has a little traction to the uh, to the pivot, because that's going to be a steel pivot, obviously. And probably right there, if you can see it, that's the steel bar insert. So if I touch that, it's definitely going to... I can feel the attraction there. These screws, let's see, is the... Okay, the backspacer, that's not titanium. 
I mean, that's titanium. That is titanium. All right. This is a really cool knife. Okay, I just so many little bonuses. All right, so what I'm getting is this is a titanium scale, contoured really nicely, chamfered really well. I mean, there's no sharp edges. Everything is nice and smooth. And I will say, I, I have my, my Chavez, which I love this. Uh, uh, this is the rendition. Rendi 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 oh, boy. 229. Redention, Redention. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, but it's a two to nine. Uh, this one, when I got it, the corners were just brutal. Okay, and some of the corners here are still brutal, but they're not the ones that dig into me. These corners were all brutal. So what I did is I buffed these out, just polished them, so they're just ever so subtly smooth. And you can't really tell. I mean, it looks like just normal wear from, from carrying it, right? But that made a huge difference because that sharp edge would dig in and after a while it was really uncomfortable. And little things like that are, are huge when you have a knife. And man, there's no sharp edges anywhere. Everything's nice and smooth, chamfered all the way around, which is huge. So when I, when I grip this, I'm gripping really tight, no hot spots, even with this clip, no hot spots, which is really nice. If I hold it back here, now I got medium to medium large hands. So notice I can get full four fingers on here without the choke up position, which is really not, I don't think the intended position. I think it's more up here, right? So if you have medium large, uh, so I have large hands width wise, medium length wise. So if you have your large hands, you definitely can get here extra large. I think you're going to be a little over this edge. You're going to be like that, right? But if you choke up like this, extra large, double X, triple extra large, I think no problem. And you'll have plenty of room to to put your thumb here and if you stick your thumb out you can go all the way up here but typical someone who extra large hands does that their thumb will probably be right there right on the jimping which gives you some nice traction to make sure you're not going to slip and that finger tool plenty of room right there i'm not going to get close to that definitely i can choke my finger here and my finger here so i've got a good solid presentation on that grip which is really nice for a push clip push cut and then i can come in here for a nice pinch cut you see that nice precision cut i can really get in there really well which is really nice which is one of the benefits of this blade but because it's sort of like a little reverse tanto up here you've got a little pokey pokey here so if you you know if you're cutting mulch or dirt or you've got dog food cat food or cases of water you need to open up I mean, that little tip there is still very nice and pokey. You can get into whatever you need to get into to open up, right? So very uh, utilitarian in the sense of very useful. So that's really nice. I like that. I like that a lot. So lots of benefits here. I like the backspacer. This is all titanium. This is titanium. And the liners in here, both sides are titanium. They're not steel. This is titanium liner. So I don't know if you want to call this an inset frame lock or inset liner lock. I don't know what we call this because it is a, it is a scale over the, over the titanium scale. So it's fully on the outside. And we've got, yeah, we've got what? We've got three screws here and the, and, and the, uh, the, uh, uh, pocket clip screw and then we got over here just two and so it is captive pivot I like that typical to Devo knives right there you got the little logo which is cool I, very subtle not a whole lot of branding on the knife anywhere I don't see it anywhere let's see do we see anything on here that says I wonder if it's inside let's see does it say inside now you can see there's the titanium the titanium backspace you can see it on this side that wasn't well, it was all blacked out, I guess. Yeah, it's blacked out. It's just reflecting really well. Let's see. Does it say anything on the inside here? I don't see it. But man, all that milling is great. Just really fantastic milling on this. And I wonder... Yeah, I, I'm thinking this is a full piece of titanium on this side. It doesn't look like it's an insert, but on this side, I definitely see a steel insert. Uh, So I put the, my, my flashlight in my mouth just to point out if you could see right there, that little line right there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's kind of hard to do with two hands. So you see that right there, that little line th that shows that that's an, uh, a, um, an insert, right? And then the scale over on top. But this one looks like it's a full scale. I don't see a little line there. I really think that's a full solid piece of titanium. Really, really well milled out to give it some really nice lightweight, just some great touches. All right, so a lot of titanium. Definitely getting great value for your money. And I think this clip here, this is titanium, which means it's going to have great flexibility without worrying. So one of the things I'm not a big thing with wire clips is so many times when they're, when they're steel, they bend. And once they bend, they don't really go back. Steel is not as forgiving as titanium. Titanium clips tend to have a little more flexibility on there and they go back to their shape. You know, if you do this too much, they just stay open after a while. The metal fatigues, it kind of stretches, if you will. Um, 
then you you know you would have to anneal it if you wanted to reconstitute or realign the mo molecules and, and and bring those bonds back together because really what happens is some of the bonding the the, the line the linear bonds that can hold it together are kind of breaking and stretching right so you have metal fatigue which is on a molecular level is really the bonding weakening or breaking right so I mean we can get into I don't want to get into uh, metal um, th um, chemistry here but I mean <coughs> just it's interesting it, it just basically metal fatigue is when the the metal gets weak it after a while would just break and it's because it's starting to micro shear micro crack if you will the bonds start to come apart and annealing brings that back together it just basically reconnects those places where it broke that's at a high level. I know that's not real technical, and so some of you guys who want them way more technical, hey, go check out Laren Thomas, um, uh, Knife Steel Nerds. Really great, great channel. He has so much awesome information. Really enjoy that guy. I really enjoy everything he talks about, but I don't want to... I want to give credit to that guy. He's done so much for the for the industry. That's a really neat guy. All right, so I believe this particular knife... Let me look at the box. Does this say on here? Okay, I'm gonna look at the outside. I think, I believe my my metal. I believe it's M. Is it M390 on this one? Oh, where is that? Okay, let me let me look at my tag. No, it's 20 CV. All right, so this is 20 CV blade steel. Uh, I don't see any marking anywhere. I'm gonna look real quick. Let's see if we can see it on here. Yeah, I like the all blacked out. Nothing on here. So to me, that's really cool. I mean, it's truly blacked out. So you're not. You're not getting any of that, and uh, I like I like the scale, and and what I see, and I don't know if you can see this on a very very close up. Here, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, right there. You see that? There's some micro milling. It's got some texture. It's not perfectly smooth, even with the stone wash. You see the very small lines? That's the milling lines that occurred, and you have that on both sides. Can you see that? I think that's really awesome. And I love the fact that it's all blacked out. There's no markings on the knife anywhere when you see that. I think that's really cool, especially when you come up here. And then, oh, it's okay. So now we can get a little better look. So let's see if we can see that. Get the focus here. There's the steel bar insert right there. Let me get my finger out of the way. So there's the steel bar insert right there. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to get the other knife over here. So you can see that right there. That's the steel bar insert and on the titanium scale. And what I did earlier is I put this magnet over here. No traction, but it does. You'll see it, it holds right there, but there's nothing here. And it just, it wants to pull forward because it's, there's nothing here for it to attract to. It <coughs> means it's a, uh, sorry, I probably need to get a drink. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Really nice little touches. So let's, let me get you a nice close-up look at the blade. You can see that hollow grind. And if you get the right reflection, you can definitely see the hollow grind, the way it reflects there. It's the curvature of the light as it bends. Let's look at the other side. Make sure my fingerprints are off of that. You can definitely see that. It's really nice. It's a nice blackout, really well. And this is titanium. What? How cool is that? I, I, I almost want to reach out and ask Kevin, you know, how he did that and where he got them because I would love to put those titanium type of wire clips on this knife over here, that's I would have loved to have that. That's why I got this lynch clip on this one, because it was steel. And uh, I don't know, I just like the idea of not having to worry if I bend it or stretch it, it's going to totally get ruined. And it, see, because once it stretches, you know, if you, you could fall out and lose it. I don't want to do that. But man, the action is great on this. So let's get a nice close up here. Look at that. You can see that. Let's look at the other side here. Really nice. See that? Let's look at the back spacer here. And see where you have the little lanyard loop, if you will, right? Let's look at the, the front here with the jimping up here and the jimping right here is really nice. And you can see it's nice and centered really well. Nice job. Nice job on this knife. Let me see if I get a good up, directly up. Ooh, sorry. I'm really trying to focus on so you guys can see this. And then you can see the loophole, the recessed screw all the way in. You've got a nice little ramp. It doesn't have that weird duckbill thing. So it's going to clear up here and it's going to come back here. And you've got plenty of room to clear here. Nothing's going to grab the knife back here. That's always really, really nice. I think that's a great touch. All right. Let's go back to our normal. Very, very cool. I like that a lot. And the action is really nice. I'm going to put a little oil in there and we're going to see if 
if uh, maybe, I mean, I might put some skip washers in there just because as nice as Best Tech did a job on this, I, and I think they did a fantastic job, you know, they're not going to be the, the best, the perfect, um, if you will, um, uh, sorry, I'm looking for my little bag of hardware. Where did that go? I thought I had it here somewhere. Did I drop it? <laughs> All right, there was a little bag of hardware here somewhere, and I think I put it down somewhere. Now I got I can't find it. Well, in that bag of hardware, there was like screws and there was all these pivots and stuff. But um, the washers, if you saw, they they you could actually see. Um, get this out of the way. I don't want the camera to focus on this stuff. Um, you could see the one side is open where the, the ceramic ball bearings were visible, and the other side it just had a little hole cut cutouts where the ball bearings kind of uh, were. Just part of it was fitting through right so the skiff washers they are like they're completely capped out of both sides you can't have anything get in there so that makes it a little cleaner and easier but the 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 tolerances that uh, steven skiff does on his washers are great and kevin if you know kevin and you watch left edc he does a lot of skiffs on almost everything and he even puts skiffs on his own knives so i'm sure he put his skiff on his buzz and in honor of kevin i'll put a skiff on here and i i already know what size skiff that's going to be because yeah he's already told steve skiff these are the sizes that fit and i'm sure all of us who appreciate kevin and this design will do the same right so really really great knife i am enjoying that and look at that already yeah, I think skiffs coming in here, this thing would just drop shut beautifully like butter. I don't I don't think I have to tune. Yeah, I don't have to tune the liner. This liner is really nice. This is perfect. And and I think understanding that this is a front flipper, you know you can't have a super strong detent, right? Now if it was a flipper back here and a thumb stud, I know Kevin would definitely have had it a lot harder, but this is perfect. This is absolutely for me, I think it's perfect. This is I would say for a front flipper, it's on the medium side. If it was thumb stud or a flipper, you know, regular flipper, I would put this medium light. You know, um, uh, it's not definitely, it's def not definitely light for a front flipper. Uh, for some people, they might not like that. They might want it medium heavy. And you know, you can take this knife apart. You can uh, bend the the lock bar, and the lock bar is this little part of the liner here. You bend it in a little bit, and you do it very carefully. And I've got a bunch of videos if you haven't seen it, where I actually tune it out typically because I like a lighter detent. I'm not going to do that on this one. This one's just really fantastic as far as I'm concerned. But um, you could bend it in to get a stronger detent if you don't like it and you want it a little stronger. So very good, very good. Hey, if you like this video, if you have any questions about this unboxing, you know, you want to know about the knife, please comment down below. If you have any questions about the future uh, when I do the review, any questions you want me to talk about, anything that you're curious, please comment down below and ask. I, I do try to read all my comments and respond to everyone. Um, I'm at a point in the channel where I can still do that, and I really want to go out of my way to do that. If you have any questions in general for Rob's Nerdy Knives, feel free to comment down below or any suggestions for any future videos. I would love to hear from you. I really do appreciate them all. So that would be awesome. Hey, if you like this content, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it entertaining, informative, of just value to you, or just got a good laugh out of it, would you consider uh, hitting the like button down below? Yeah, hit that like button. That really helps out a lot. And then if you've already hit the like button, would you consider subscribing as well? Subscribing and liking the channel really helps me out. It allows the channel to grow, for us to do more, to have more opportunities. I would really appreciate that. And if you've done all of that already, Hey, would you consider hitting the notification button so you can be notified of future videos when they drop? That would also help. And then finally, if you haven't checked me out over on Instagram, maybe check me out over on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. That's again on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. I sure would appreciate it and can talk to you over there as well and would appreciate that. So, hey, thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.